Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, we will learn all about the new toolbar control in Power Apps. The toolbar control is a horizontal bar that can have one or more commands that can be selected by the user. The commands can be in the form of text, icon or both, can have different appearance and behavior depending upon the maker's configuration. So let's check it out in action. The modern toolbar control displays a row of buttons that can activate commands. Here I have the modern toolbar control connected to a modern table control. If I select a specific record in the table control, the options in the toolbar control come alive that allow me to either edit the data of the selected record in the table control or view the data or delete the record in the table control. When a record is not selected in the table control, notice how the command buttons in the toolbar are disabled. I have one option that's always enabled which gives the user the ability to create a new record. The same toolbar experience is what I have leveraged here in a gallery control experience. The toolbar buttons I have left activated in this scenario. The user can select, view the record, or edit an existing record. or simply go ahead and delete a record. Let's explore the modern toolbar control and its properties. Firstly, it's a modern control. So we need to ensure that under settings and updates, modern controls and themes is turned on. This new control will be available if your app authoring version is this specific number or greater than this number. Now, if I head to insert and search for toolbar, here is the new modern toolbar control. The control items property, format text, the items is a table, each command or button in the toolbar is represented by an object that has the following properties. Item key uniquely identifies that specific item. In this case, item key is new. Item display name is the text that's displayed here. Notice if I change the display name, the button represents that information immediately in the toolbar. Item icon name, add. Now this has to match the modern icon controls names. Let's go and insert the icon control. This control has an icon property and these are the modern suite of icons that are available. Let's say I would like to show this icon, which is document bulletin list. The icon property of the icon control has that name that I can simply copy, go back to my toolbar control, item icon name, I'll paste that, and you can see how that icon is displayed right here. Item appearance, once again, we can correlate this with another modern control, and that is the modern button control, which has a property under style and theme called type. I can pick secondary, outline, subtle, and transparent. So these are the options I can plug in into the modern toolbar controls item appearance property. I'll change this to subtle. That button changes its appearance. Item icon style. This also comes from the icon property. I could use regular or I can say filled. An item tooltip, when you hover on that item, 
Here I've changed it to add document. So it represents that information. On similar lines, I can go and plug in multiple items as part of this table that is being associated to the toolbar controls items property. Here the table has four items, but if you explore the toolbar control, it's listing out two items. After the second item, we have this three ellipses. If I click on it, it shows more items. So if the toolbar control does not have enough width to fit the items, it will automatically show the three ellipses option. And if I expand the width, it will represent all that information. The delete option is disabled. Well, that's because for the items property, there is one property here called item disabled. If this is set to true, that button will be disabled. Now, if I click on any of these buttons, I get this notification bar on the top. That means we can take action when any of these buttons within the toolbar control is clicked. And the way this is possible is because the toolbar control has an on select property. On select, the formula is switch on self dot selected item key. Item key is what uniquely identifies each item in the toolbar control. New, edit, delete. So whenever the user selects an item, if the key is new, it will give the notification message that the new button was clicked. If it's edit, then edit is clicked and so and so forth. Let's explore the properties of the toolbar control. Padding, by default is medium, can change it to small, or I can make it large. Alignment, by default it's horizontal. I can also align it vertically. This time, the height is important. Layout, current option is icon before the text. We have options like icon after, icon above, text only, or icon only. Appearance, I'll change this to primary. It shows the primary color. And this color, it picks from the theme of my Power App. Notice as I change the theme, automatically the modern toolbar control also changes the colors, properties for styling and theming. If you wanted to follow a specific color palette, you can pick one. If you reset this, it will go back to the theme color. I also have options to change the font, change the font size, change the font color, font weight, and font styles. I have a modern table control that displays data from my connected data source, which in this case is a SharePoint list. To make changes to any of the items that's being displayed in the table control, select, and then it automatically redirects the user to a screen which has the form control where I can make changes to that selected item. If I want to create a new item, I click on this new button on the top right. Perfect scenario where I can use the modern toolbar control. This new button, I'll go ahead and delete it. Insert, I'll pick toolbar. This toolbar, alignment and container, stretch, flexible width, on. Toolbar controls items property. Let's change this. Text new issue, icon as add, appearance primary color of the theme, style as regular, tooltip, add new issue. Second option is edit. This button should be enabled only if the user has selected an item in my table control. So for that, we have the property item disabled, which I will set to 
the function is blank. My table controls name, which in my case is table one dot selected dot title is a column in my SharePoint list that is required. So I'll check to see whether that is blank or no. I have a record selected. So it shows the added button. Let's say I was to sort the data in my table control. I have no record selected. This button is disabled. For delete item disabled, I'll use the same formula. And then the last one is info. Item display name, I'll say view. Item icon name. One of the icons is I, so I'll use that. And item disabled. I'll use that same logic because all of these three options, editing, deleting, viewing, should only be visible if the user selects an item in my table control. My table control on select, I had code to navigate the user to my form screen. I'll remove that code. So now the user can select a record in the table control and decide if they want to edit it, delete it, or view it. If you want to change the order of the items in the toolbar control, all I have to do is order it. So view, I'll place it right above edit. Now it's reordered. Now let's add actions when any of these buttons are clicked. Toolbar controls on select property. When new is clicked, Let's change this. I would first want to set a variable called where form mode to form mode dot new. Reset the form on my form screen and then navigate the user to my form screen. When edit is clicked, I want to do something similar. Form mode is edit, reset the form, and take the user to the form screen. For info, I'll set my form mode to view. So a variable will be set dynamically whenever any of these buttons, new edit or view is clicked. The form which is on my form screen will be reset and the user will be navigated to the form screen. When I select an item, click view. This takes me to the form screen where I can view the data for that specific record. If I click edit, I can make changes. If I click new, it takes me to the new form experience where I can create a new record. All of this because my form control default mode property is set to that variable that is dynamically changing the item property of this form control is my table controls selected item. So it has the context of that record. For my delete button here, I'll use the formula remove, remove from my connected data source. In my case, it's my issue tracking SharePoint list. Go and remove table controls selected item and once that's done notify the user that the record has been deleted i'll pick this specific item click delete here is a scenario wherein i have a gallery control and within this i have a toolbar that provides different options, view the item, edit the item, or delete the item. Similar concept, just that I'm leveraging a gallery control. And right at the top of my screen as well, I have a separate toolbar control. On select, I'm taking different actions. When information is clicked, go launch the SharePoint list. Think about various scenarios where we can use this. We could also use this as a navigation control. 
If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.